my film class. Um, well, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, if given such the rare and unique opportunity to describe my interesting film class, it would be memorable, unexplainable, and confusing. Or maybe just a high school representation of the industry? Or maybe a better way to describe it would be a safe place for stupidity and idiocy where the mind of a teenage boy can truly be expressed and reach its fullest potential. I mean, in all honesty, I just see it as a hiatus for track boys, but that's beside the point. Let's just say that being the only girl in my film class the past four years has been something. I remember my freshman year of high school. I had waited for so long to finally be in film class my second semester, to start making films, achieving my goals, and becoming the next Catherine Bigelow. But now, after four years, I walk up the stairs in the student life building and enter the hidden door that either nobody knows about or avoids, and I never know what is waiting inside. This is my film class. And yes, this is how it has been for four years. You may not think that this is the film room, considering the excessive amounts of track uniforms, the potent sneaker odor, and the music staff whiteboards, but I can assure you, it is. The special thing is, you never quite know what you're getting yourself into. Upper body still, it's all wrist and feet. Uh. <laughs> Aren't they just spectacular specimens? First, there's Jared and Nick, the duo of all duos. I will never forget our first assignment in Intro to Film. Write a script about two people meeting for the first time and shoot it. Easy. But there's a catch. You were not allowed to shoot your own script. Let's just say that Jared and Nick took my very serious, melodramatic, and brooding love story and made it into a farce about two gay men set in a high school basketball gym. That happened, and it is still my most scarring memory from freshman year. Next, there's Aaron. Aaron is special. His creativity is way beyond my thinking, and I can never tell if he's totally serious or just plain kidding. He doesn't really say much, oh, but when he does, it's truly profound. There was this period in time in which we would do a writing exercise every Monday inspired by an image or music or a quote or sound effects. And let's just say I will never hear the wind by Cat Stevens in the same way. The forbidden love between a circus performer and a monkey. Man smuggles drugs from Cuba by using trained dolphins. Demon comes to earth looking for a soul to possess, accidentally possesses a baby, decides it's worth it. Sal forgot to bring the blankets to Stalingrad, freezing the German army to death making him tonight's big loser. A dwarf pumps up to train to fight the man who tried to kill his family. The only problem, his only trainer is a sumo wrestler. I mean, all the credit to him, and he does surprise you sometimes. Oh, and how could I forget about THE twins? The two Greek gods sent down from heaven to make film history with over 50 plus film festival acceptances with their breakout film 2 of 5 million, although personally, I believe it should have been Time Bomb Pizza. 
Not only did they do film, but get this, they were also track stars. I think a little piece of Mr. Gillentine's, also known as G's, also known as my film teacher's heart, broke and went with them to Boston. They are truly missed every second of every day. I know 2 of 5 million is good, but Time Bomb Pizza, best film I've ever seen. Definitely the best looking twins I've ever seen. I remember watching Time Bomb Pizza for the first time and it just blew my brain. Hey, maybe you should try what the twins did. Two of five million is probably the best film of the Kincaid Film Department. Uh, hey G, I texted the twins to ask them about my film and they just said- <laughs> Twas a tragic time when they graduated, but don't worry, they're with us in spirit. Like seriously, there's not a single day that I'm reminded of their legacy. <laughs> And a class wouldn't be complete without a teacher, Mr. Ryan Gillentine. Yes, we already stated the fact that he loves the twins, but he also has a strong passion for Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi, Minecraft, and film jargon that gets stuck in your head for days, but somehow turns out to be useful. Don't fix it in post. That was totally rad. Kill your babies. Coverage. Always do age appropriate casting. You don't want a 15-year-old girl playing someone's wife. That's weird. He also has the most extensive anthology of films in his brain that I have ever heard of in my entire life. And even though no one in the class has any idea what he's talking about, we still talk about this random film as if it were Get Out by Jordan Peele. So guys, Lawrence of Arabia is this beautiful, epic, Epic film. That's why when you go to the concession stand, a Coke is like $6. It's ridiculous. I don't get it. I don't understand why this happens. You know, and, and that, that really brings us back to the fact that, uh, that um, you know, Lawrence of Arabia is just this beautiful, epic, sweeping film. And if you haven't seen it, you really should. It's actually screening at a theater um, in town um, in, in about three weeks. So you should all get tickets. You should all go. Yeah. <sighs> I cannot say it has been easy these past four years. From film projects vanishing, sexist comments with respect to my ability screaming, countless hours alone editing abandoned projects, and names of only male directors being deemed as monumental. But in these moments, it is the loony, ridiculous, and eccentric group of boys I have the privilege of calling my family that are always there to remind me of, well, me. This is my film class, and as absurd as these memories may seem, they capture us perfectly, our film family. These are the boys who have fostered my love for filmmaking, the boys who helped me laugh at a bad project rather than labor over it. These are the boys who have helped me discover my voice as a filmmaker, the boys who nicknamed me the prodigy. These are the boys who believed in me when I didn't have the courage to believe in myself. The boys who respected my responsibility, creativity, and individuality. I just wanted to say thank you. You all have played a vital role in my story. But now it's time for me to grow. Yeah!